Winter Rosie here. This is a video I've been wanting to make ever since I made this channel, and probably since the day I became a K-pop fan. And that's a video about Red Velvet's untouchable discography. I wanted to be serious while also having a bit of fun, so I decided to make a tier list out of it. I won't be including any Japanese releases. These will be for the Korean title tracks only. I was going to do it for their whole discography but they have like 300 plus songs and I didn't have that much time. Before we start I'd like to show my credentials as a rebel love. Pretty trustable if you ask me. Y'all know how tier lists work. The highest being the best tier and the lowest being the worst. I'll be doing this in chronological order by the way. I encourage y'all to try it out yourselves. There's a link in the description if you ever want to. But anyways, without further ado, please enjoy the video. Sometimes you gotta be bold. Just rock the world. The one that started it all. How well does it hold up today? All things considered, I think this was and still is a good song. I don't think it's half bad. I think it's fairly catchy. Low key obnoxious. But isn't that most RV songs? I thought it was properly performed and sung, but nothing that impressive. Obviously the standout moment would be Wendy's iconic shine on me part. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason why people even go back to this song. I'd also like to argue this still has some of their best rapping they've done in their whole discography. For the most part the track was prettily done and sung, so quality wise I don't think it was a disappointment. Its biggest problem for me isn't its quality, but its whole premise. I don't know how to explain this but happiness does not feel like a Red Velvet song. Hear me out. I know a lot of people including myself say that Red Velvet can handle any concept, which they actually are capable of but only to some extent. Like happiness, while good, just felt like it shouldn't have been for them. A lot of other groups debuted with a song that would define them even after their next releases. And I don't feel that from happiness. Apart from being their literal debut there isn't that much reason to look back on it. This felt more like a pre-debut release rather than an actual and fully fledged out debut. There's a reason why Red Velvet and most people don't acknowledge this song as their first one. It just didn't feel like it. Even outside of the music, everything points at this being a rushed and underdeveloped debut. It simply wasn't the best song to debut with. This is the most basic thing Red Velvet has done and I'm glad it was the first and last time. It's pretty fair to put it here. This wasn't bold or anything, and it most definitely didn't rock the world. I guess I'll consider this as an original even if it isn't. You know what, if it weren't a cover, I would have easily put this on the highest tier easily. This is the first time we ever got to see this side of Red Velvet. Unlike Happiness, Be Natural actually sounds like a Red Velvet song. And the irony is this isn't even an original track. I don't know if I should be thanking SM for this but whatever. It's been 7 years. I just have to live with it. Because damn is this a really good cover. I'm going to be commenting a lot on the girls vocals in this video so bear with me. One thing you could never take away from RV are their amazing voices. From sound to tone to ability. They are all so great at it. I'm no singer, but I do know what sounds good, and Red Velvet definitely sounds amazing. The five have very different and distinguishable voices, but whenever they harmonize, they sort of create this voice that has its own sound and everything. I like to call her Red Velvet sixth member. Whenever these five girls sing together, it is just chef's kiss. Especially here where they all sing together for most of the song, don't they just sound amazing? The cover is so good they teased it even before their debut. The velvetiness and seductiveness of the song remains on top even after all these years. In my opinion it still is their sexiest song to date, and they tried overthrowing it, but it simply can't be overthrown. Maybe I'm just a sucker for R&B, but can you really blame me? Name one thing wrong about this song and I'll wait. Exactly. Nothing is wrong with this song. Everything is absolutely right with it and I will carry that until the day I die. 
So far everything got better. The only downside is this isn't the original song. And Young's rap was pretty bad but anyways. All we need now is a truly original and genuine Red Velvet song. Something that will make everyone go. So this is the group called Red Velvet? Okay. I see you. Something that will make people pay attention. And they did. They gave us two songs that will further define what Red Velvet is and will become as a group. Ladies and gentlemen this is what I call a debut. I think we can all agree that the last two songs were just a test and these two are the actual debut songs. I mean it just makes perfect sense. First of all, this is Yeri's official debut. Second, this mini album had two title tracks that would set the stone for all the new Red Velvet titles moving forward. And third, this properly showed what their concept truly is. The loved red side, and the infamous velvet side. Let's talk about the red title first. Miss Ice Cream Cake herself. I have mixed feelings for her if I'm being honest. My initial reaction to this song was just me shocked. I was like 13 when I first heard this song. Mind you I had the music taste of a fucking turtle back in my days, so I was easily impressed by anything that made a sound. So after all those years do I still feel the same for Cake song? I guess so. I don't think anyone has made a song quite like it since then, or at least nothing as good as it. So I still see it as something unique and different. And me, who loves being quirky and different as well still loves this song a lot. The unsettling cute horror vibe I get from it is unmatched. Consider me terrified every time I hear that la 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 melody. I also miss Red Velvet's rapping a lot so this song holds a special place in my heart. The sass and attitude is something I've been missing in Red Velvet titles for a long time. There's actually so much to like about Ice Cream Cake. The only real problem I have is the fact that I just like their other songs more than it. No matter how you look at it, that's just a big compliment for Red Velvet. That means they just got better and better after time. It also isn't that easy for a 7 year old song to still be relevantly good. I love the way they move. And rightfully so. I'm pretty sure there was a moment when this was considered the godfather of all Red Velvet songs, and I think you can tell why. Introducing the infamous Velvet side of RV. I don't know about you but getting a Velvet song from Red Velvet is like opening Christmas gifts. It only comes once a year, but the wait is always worth it. Even when they had two concepts the red always got the better treatment. They have more of it than they do Velvet songs. Which I can understand why they do. The red is definitely more K-pop friendly than what the Velvet offers. So every time they release one it's always exciting. Because it means no trying to appeal to the public. And time to do it for the art and art only. I think the best way to describe automatic is simple. Its simplicity is the best thing it has going for it. Simple beats, simple melody, and simply a good song. Fans label this as Be Natural's sister, for obvious reasons. The dreamy atmosphere, doesn't it feel so heavenly? Don't even get me started with the vocals, because like Be Natural, the song just flows, and I say even more smoothly. Yeri joining added a whole nother layer to the vocals in this group. From background to the harmonization, I say her addition was pretty much necessary. The song itself is just very satisfying to listen to. Automatic doesn't do a lot. There's no crazy outstanding part or anything. It's simply a good R&B experience. Another reason why I love this comeback so much. It offered us the best of both worlds. If you don't already know, the Velvet is the complete opposite of their red side. Having the contrast of both songs really made us see what kind of group RV really is. Their diversity which will continue to be their trademark until this day. I think looking at this comeback as their official debut surely is the way. It's a comeback that perfectly defined Red Velvet and everything else that comes after it. Because the next few tracks are undoubtedly some of their best. This is one of the best songs K-pop has to offer. This ain't even my favorite but I know this is one of the greatest K-pop songs ever made. Fuck where do I even begin? 
Vocals. As with every other Red Velvet song, sound amazeballs. Yes, amazeballs. Can't believe that's a word. But anyways back to the music. Vocals are obviously great as always. Rapping was fucking iconic. Not their best work but I respect it a lot. I still wonder why that whole section was just one big Michael Jackson reference. But whatever the reason is I just love the fact it exists. Concept wise I thought this was the perfect representation of what their red side is. Just pure fun quirk and adrenaline. This song literally does not stop, until that short bridge which then escalates back immediately to the fast paced final chorus. I do know for a fact some people absolutely hate this song with a passion. As if this is the most annoying song ever created. To which I say they're wrong, because this song is a masterpiece. There's too much dum-dums, the song is too fast, it's too repetitive, it's messy and everywhere, it's irritating me. Yeah yeah we get it, you hate fun and we understand. Now this way please. I think what made the song so great is exactly what made the people hate it. It's too fast, too much, too messy. Like please, that was the point. I'm sad so little groups try to do something bold like Dum Dum. And no, mixing 10 different songs into one isn't being bold, that doesn't count. What I meant was trying to have fun, trying new things, and experimenting without sacrificing quality. I may not be a producer, but I am the listener, and Dum Dum is exceptionally a great song. It possesses one thing a lot of K-pop songs lack nowadays, which is style. I hear Dum Dum and I immediately recognize it, it is its own thing. Unlike mediocre K-pop songs these days that all sound the same and play just a little differently. This song has style and identity, which is something a lot of their songs always had. I've seen other rankings of Red Velvet songs, and for some reason I always see this at the bottom or at the very last of the list, which is very sad to see. Now I understand not everyone likes slower songs, which is completely fine. But I can't help but think that this song isn't getting enough love from anyone. I know there are people out there, like me, who understand this song, and think it's greater than what people make it out to be. The song has much more meaning to it that seeing fans put it at the bottom is upsetting. This could be their best song, and I do not mean that lightly at all, because the song is beautiful inside and out. Red Velvet had always sounded great, but there's just something that the red side couldn't completely capture, and that is the real emotion of their voices. Irene Selgi, Wendy Joy and Yeri all have very different and distinguishable vocals. Each one of them gives a different feeling from the other and all of them had a part to play. The instrumentals may not be as exciting or chaotic as their other tracks. It's a unique feeling that would only work for such songs. The pianos, strings, heck even their own voices could be considered as an instrument. Properly orchestrated and perfectly done. This is what we meant when we say music moves people, the chills and emotions just from the sounds alone. I always wondered why the title is the way it is. July 7th. One of these nights. After all these years I decided to search about it, see if it even means anything. I'm more of a melody person than I am a lyric person, but I always do recognize the connection between the two. So when I search for lyrics and get that connection, especially on a song like this, it makes me appreciate it even more. Traditionally in Korea, Chilsok is a period when the hot season slowly fades into the rainy season. And the rain that falls during this period is called Chilsok water. The story of Chilsok revolves around two lovers who were separated by the king. The king ordered them to live separately, allowing them to meet only once a year. And that day, would be the seventh day of the seventh month. The two lovers were always excited to meet each other. But that excitement would always slowly turn into sorrow, for they have to wait another year, just to meet again. And every time it rains during that season, the water that falls is believed to be the tears of the couple. Let us meet again, one of these nights.
I love this song more than myself. Okay maybe not but it's partially true. This was the first Red Velvet song I ever heard. This was what made me stand Red Velvet even. So maybe it's just the nostalgia that makes me love this. But I swear I don't think a single person in this world would dare to dislike Russian Roulette. Like I'd understand Dum Dum or any ballad. But this? Impossible. I don't believe you. You cannot hate this song because there is nothing to hate about it. Someone please comment down below anything negative about the song other than the fact it ends. I personally never got tired of this song, not even a single second. I think my love for it grows each day that passes. Out of all their old releases this is one that I still actively listen to. Shit has crack and I'm addicted to it. I still don't know what exactly makes it so great, but I'm going to guess it's because it's very balanced in all aspects. Not gonna lie this song had the potential to be annoying, repetitive, boring, and everything else. But the way it was produced and performed was obviously done by professionals who have love for their craft. This is genuinely the most perfect song ever made, at least in K-pop. Not music in general, but it's got the potential to be. I imagine everyone who worked on this did the same thing as that old guy who fixed Woody in Toy Story 2. Every small and big detail worked and done to perfection. Not to mention this is the best example of bubblegum pop in K-pop, of course tied with Love Bomb. It's so hard to explain why you love something, because sometimes there are no words needed for it. Sometimes you just feel it and go, yeah, this is the one. And that's exactly what I feel about Russian Roulette. No other words needed. Let the music speak for itself. <laughs> I feel like this is where we start really disagreeing with each other. There are two types of people in this world. We have the tasteless people, and we have the rookie supremacists. I myself am a part of the latter. Okay in all seriousness I understand why you'd dislike this song. I'm going to say it for you. This feels like a dollar store version of Dum Dum. Repetitive, messy, all over the place, annoying, and the list goes on. And you know what I kind of agree with you. Kind of. Okay, maybe the chorus is pretty unbearable sometimes but other than that, it's actually pretty good. The verses in this song are easily better than most of their other ones. I'm not kidding, just listen to the pre-chorus. The instrumentals to this song are just so good. If it weren't for that chorus this song could have done better. But to be honest, even the chorus can be good sometimes. And like I said about Dum Dum, that obnoxiousness is the point. The song isn't underproduced, they sounded amazing, and everything was well put together. So objectively speaking this isn't a bad song at all. While this tier list is subjective, I myself am appreciative of songs like these, and sometimes I even love it a lot. I don't think it should be that high, but also not that low on the list. It's definitely an interesting song to say the least. This was my first Red Velvet comeback and I loved everything about it. Correction. Everyone loved it. This was probably Korea's national anthem for the next few years after its release. I don't blame them at all because this is a certified bop. This was released at a time when K-pop was blooming and new fans started to come. Including myself who was introduced to a whole new genre of music. This song felt like a welcome song to me. I feel comfort whenever I listen to Red Flavor. It makes me happy and sad every time. I think anyone who has listened to it can understand what I'm saying. This is an amazing and truly perfect song. A mixture of loud pop, the dreamy vocals, that fucking deep voice in the background, that heaven sent bridge oh lord, and that amazing iconic chorus of course. I really genuinely believe there hasn't been a summer song as great as this one in so long. You know the music is special when it reminds you of a certain point in time you keep looking back to. This obviously varies from person to person, but personally this reminded me of my transition from being a kid to being a teenager. High school was coming and I was anxious about growing up. I know the fun will remain, but I also had to prepare for the worst. And this song acted like a time travel phone, basically telling my old self that everything will be fine and to not worry much, just continue being yourself and have fun, and everything will be alright. And for all the times I listen to Red Flavor I always get reminded of how far they've come. 5 years is a long time, and this song is as amazing as ever. It may not be my favorite of the bunch, but it will always hold a special place in my heart. 
It's nostalgic, fun, uplifting, emotional, and every other positive word in the dictionary. The song has something to offer for anyone, and I believe that's what makes it so great. I'm going to be straightforward with it. I am not a fan of Peekaboo. At least not as much as the others. I do enjoy this song from time to time, but only so little. I was really looking forward to this comeback since it was a full Velvet album, and I was honestly more than impressed. The album not only became one of their best, but also one of the best in K-pop period. It was iconic, it was unique, it was everything you could have asked for. And I could only wish to say the same for the title track. I don't think it's that bad honestly, I just thought it was boring in some parts. For the first half or so I was just not feeling it. I could fall asleep and I probably wouldn't miss out on much. Compared to their last 5 or so comebacks which felt full and grandiose, this one just felt empty. It's like a watered down sprite or something. The feeling is there, but you know it could have hit a lot better. I think as a title track and opener for the album it was perfect. It was released at an appropriate time. The aesthetics and vibes were immaculate. It's eerie and unsettling, yet it's a dance pop song, which makes it even creepier. And like I said, the album really helped me like this song a lot. I think as a whole package this is one of Red Velvet's best, which I may or may not make a video about but that's for another day. It's just compared to other title tracks, which is what this video is based on. It doesn't hold up well. While my appreciation for the song has grown over the years, there's absolutely no way I could put this any higher than here. Where the fuck do I even begin with bad boy? I guess I'll just start from the very beginning then. From the first time I heard this to this very moment right now, I have been getting goosebumps. I'd say this is my velvet equivalent of what I felt with Russian Roulette, just absolute perfection. This is what I was expecting from Peekaboo. Not the sound or concept, but this thick, distinct, smooth atmosphere. Maybe I'm just a sucker for R&B, but I honestly believe this is much better than Peekaboo. From the very first note, to the very last lyric, this song was perfect for the whole 3 minutes and 30 seconds. I talk about Red Velvet's vocals a lot, saying that they have the best sound in K-pop. But this one was just another level of good, especially Wendy and Selby. Every breath they took was heaven in my ears. For a song titled Bad Boy this wasn't bad, or boy at all. I'm convinced that there's crack somewhere in this song. I could play this song on repeat every day and still wouldn't get tired of it. The instrumental is so simple yet so captivating. If you loved automatic or be natural you probably died listening to this one. It's basically a glorified version of the two. The best version it could be. I'm going to be honest. I'm still stuck in this era. Everything after bad boy doesn't feel real to me and I still believe this is their best comeback to date. And in a complimenting way, I think they peaked in this era. Looking at it by aspect and just overall, nothing beats this one. Because after bad boy I honestly think Red Velvet weren't at their best. You'd expect everything to get better, but RV has put themselves in such a high standard that it was hard to surpass, even for them. But I never held it against them since for me the bar was too high and it would have took a miracle to even reach that again. But I did say if ever they do reach or even surpass that bar in the future, my admiration for this group would have reached breaking point. But for now this is their best song along with Russian Roulette. I despise this song with a burning passion. How dare you release something like this after bad boy of all songs. If I were to unrelease a song I'd have power up be gone from existence. Not a single part of my body likes this song at all. I really tried to like it, and it's just not happening. Compared to any other song in the world this was just disappointing. Was it better than their previous song? No. Was it better than any other Red Velvet song? No. Was it better than other summer songs? No. 
Was it better than any other songs released at the time? No. Does it hold up until this day? Debatable. But for me not one bit. Would life be the same if this song was never released? Yes. Life would have been the same if not even better if it weren't for this song. What I'm trying to say is Power Up is the lowest of the low, especially for Red Velvet standards. On its own maybe it's average at best, but for Red Velvet this was just not it. I look at Bad Boy, Red Flavor, Dum Dum, and I cry of joy and happiness. Then I look at Power Up, and just cry of disappointment. One more banana nana and I will rip my ears off. Luckily this was the only time Red Velvet has ever disappointed me, but still. I really think it should have stayed in the drafts. Get that shit out of here. I completely understand why anyone wouldn't like this song. Everyone was definitely flabbergasted upon first hearing this. Even if you thought it was weird or crazy good, either way I think this shocked us in some way or another. There is a lot to unpack with this song, let's try pointing them out. This is like how to not make a song. I may not like power up but at least it had structure. Verse chorus bridge, yeah that stuff. Really bad boy on the other hand is all over the place. Producers really said fuck it I'm going ham on this song, and if that was actually the case then I think they succeeded in doing so. This song probably has more ad-libs and high notes than actual lines. The song is 3 minutes long but has about an hour worth of content. The first time listening to this you never really knew what part of the song you were in, you weren't even sure if the song would ever end. The song has like 10 different climaxes and even more really bad boys. I do like the fact this is a mixture of both the red and velvet side. To put it simply this is bad boy's red counterpart. And if you put rookie into the mix, this is the song you get. And oddly enough, after all that shit, I still enjoy this song a lot. I listen to music for a lot of things, and one of them is for entertainment. So I don't care how godly, well produced, deep, and well performed a song is. What I truly care about are songs that are interesting. I'd rather choose a fun and interesting bad song than a boringly bland good song any day. I won't praise it that highly though, while I do love it I think it still could have been better. Red Velvet really said they'll make music their own way. Fuck the rules. How do you even begin to describe this song? Not a single word in the dictionary could fully define what this song is. No one was probably ready for this. Even after the mess that was their last two comebacks, this one takes the cake. Red Velvet was so diverse that they brought in cult music to their discography. What actually was this song really? What was the point? What were they trying to do? I'm still genuinely confused about this song and will forever be. I know the song lyrics are all about go do you be yourself let go of your worries and explore the world, or something like that. But did it have to sound the way it is? It was already hard to convince people to stand Red Velvet, and releasing this did not help one bit. It was both likable or unlikable, and that mostly depended on where, when, and why you were listening to it. On some days this is a song I can enjoy, but there's also those days I wished it never happened. I don't really hate or love the song, but god do I hope for them to never release something like it again, at least for a title track. Concept wise I could understand why they even thought of releasing it, they probably wanted to catch everyone's attention on day one immediately. But looking back at it, the planning for this trilogy was the worst thing they've done, but I'll get to that topic later. For now on the title track scale, this isn't even on the list. This song is on a league way out of the others, so I'll give it a special category. This is one of their best songs period. Really hate the fact this song gets overlooked by almost everybody, because this is genuinely such a good song. Finally after 3 questionable releases, RV makes a normal sounding song, and yet people still did not like it. Sure, it's no red flavor, but it's still pretty enjoyable. This is everything good in a red velvet song meshed into one. Great vocals, fun vibes, beautiful lyrics, playful melody, clean production. Literally speaking there is nothing this song lacks. 
The references to their old songs were also really fun, and made me nostalgic along with the Deep Umpa Umpas. Overall the song is just a good time, and I hate the fact this was overshadowed by two of their most prominent releases, Zimzalabim and Psycho. While it may not be their best, I still wish for people to appreciate this song more. To me this was something truly unforgettable, but it seems like everyone else did, and that's saddening. SM's biggest mistake here is not promoting this song well and releasing it too early. I remember it still being Zimzalabim promotions, and just a few weeks later SM dropped teasers for day 2. I don't know how shit works behind the scenes but I'm pretty sure spacing out comebacks helped build hype and keeps people seated for the next one. It was also pretty late in release for a summer song in Korea, which definitely impacted its relevance. 2019 was supposed to be the year of the girls, after years of being the underdog they finally were given the moment to shine. But because of poor management, poor scheduling, and poor management again, that opportunity was taken from them. And what was supposed to be Red Velvet's biggest year yet, only led to the worst thing that could happen to any group. I will forever be salty about what happened during these times. I won't get ahead of myself too much, so let's focus on the music for now. Red Velvet had released their best song yet. I mean the Cake Girls had a lot of great songs, but if everyone had to collectively choose the one, it would unarguably be Psycho. Why you ask? Apart from the obvious good vocals and production which is just a given by now, I think just the whole vibe and feeling you get from Psycho is truly what makes it so lovable. Just a few months after release Psycho was the biggest song in the world, considered by most as the song of the year for both 2019 and 2020. Fans named it their best title track, and new fans started coming in as well, you just had to be there. The song was beautiful inside out. Great instrumentals, beautiful vocal performances, an expensive looking video, they themselves looked expensive, Wendy was blonde, everyone looked amazing too, the choreo was iconic and easy to learn, everything was perfect about it. But one thing I'd like to point out is I'm not a fan of the official audio version of this song. I meant the ones released on music platforms and everywhere else. The YouTube version and the official audio are different in some ways. If you still don't know what I'm talking about here is a short comparison. I don't know about you but those violins make all the difference. I always felt something was missing when listening to Psycho, because the first time with the MV I thought it was magical and more emotional. So when I started listening to the studio version it just felt empty like something was missing. So I just got used to it and thought of it as some Mandela effect and I was just hearing things. But after a few months I checked out the MV again and right there I knew something was missing. Is it really that big of a change? Yes, I truly believe so. I consider the two completely different things. Literally the only thing added were the violins, but that simple change easily made it better for me. Every time those violins hit it just gets me. I feel welcome. I feel like I'm ascending. The emotions that build up in my mind and heart. It's so inspirational and beautiful. God I love it so much. It's those little things that really make a song. The attention to detail. It may be small but it plays an important role in making a song feel complete. We knew it was bound to happen, we just didn't know when. Between SM's poor management and Red Velvet's group activities, it seemed like it was impossible. But it's here, we got it, and it's nothing short of incredible. I always knew these two had something special. 
Even if I wasn't a Ravella, I definitely would have been a fan of these two. They complement each other in all so many ways. Performance, vocals, charisma, attitude, personality, vibe, and many many more things. These two have been at it since the beginning, so it was only fit to see them together as a duo once again. And I believe Monster was the perfect song to accompany it. I think the song is perfect to be honest. I find nothing wrong with it. This is a song only they can perform and I'm so glad it exists. This doesn't feel like a song Red Velvet would do. It's a song specifically made for Irene and Selby. And that's probably why I love it so much. The song goes so hard you don't even know. Obviously it has some dubstep influence. Which I'm not a big fan of dubstep. But for this song I thought it was well incorporated. I thought they were going for an R&B instead. Or something like Naughty. But you know what I don't mind this at all. I think we needed something that went hard since we never really got that from RV. I'm glad we got something like this. It proves that their members really are capable and diverse. I'm sure a good majority of us like this song. I mean come on. How couldn't you? This is probably one of their biggest songs too. This goes to show that Monster truly was an iconic release. A cultural reset. One that a lot of K-pop fans will remember. My love is like water. I can't believe that one meme of hers became the first solo for Red Velvet. Anyways. I'm usually a ballad defender, but I'm not that big of a fan of Like Water. I always have to be in a specific mood to listen to it properly. Objectively speaking I think the song is great. Kind of boring, but great. Subjectively though I think it ain't all that. I've definitely heard more interesting ballads in my time. But one thing's for sure, the vocals are fucking wonderful. Wendy always sounded amazing, but her voice is just so immaculate here. I always thought that if they ever went solo I'd want Wendy first, and I specifically want a ballad album for her. Her voice has a lot of weight to it, she has a pretty low voice and seems heavy, but when she sings it feels like you're levitating. Add that with the lyrics and message of the song, it's just so deep and comforting. Why am I even explaining anything at all? It was Wendy with a ballad album, it was bound to sound amazing. Like Water just simply wasn't my favorite track though. I did like When This Rain Stops and Best Friend More, but since we're only talking about the title track, I won't rank it that high. <laughs> SM knew what they were doing when they gave Joy her stage name. This girl is so pure, so sweet, so happy and outgoing, and so joyful every time. I honestly expected a sexy concept for Joy, since she is the sexy dynamite of the group. But I'm so glad she didn't, because I saw Joy as more cheerful than sexy. Don't get me wrong she's definitely sexy, I'd do anything to see another solo from her with that concept. But Joy as a person, that's what I truly wanted to see her as a soloist. Joy is more bright than she is sexy, so everything about this debut felt right. I don't care at all if it's a remaster, because Joy flawlessly captured its vibe and made it her own. This song, the whole album in fact, is light-hearted. I really recommend this album to anyone out there who just wants to have a good time. Hello perfectly embodies the person Joy is like. This song contains all the missing euphoria in our world. You just can't help but smile every time you hear her sweet voice. In a genre full of girl crush and edgy concepts, this was a breath of fresh air. It makes me cry just because of how happy it is, and I hope the song managed to make you all happy as well. This is it, the first Red Velvet comeback since Psycho. It's barely been two years since the last one but it definitely felt long. So was it worth the wait? I don't know, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't itch for more. This is by far the most generic song Red Velvet has ever put out, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. This is tricky because while I don't hate it, there isn't much I like about it either. There was nothing outstanding about it at all. Almost all of their other tracks have at least that one part that makes me look back on it. This one I don't think has any of those moments. Yeah, pointing out the obvious, vocals and production were all great, but that's all I can say about it. It's like the song just starts, does its job, and ends. Which is exactly what a song should be, so that's not really a negative trait. 
I guess what's missing was the emotions behind the song. I know the lyrics are beautiful and everything, but the music itself just didn't connect it with me properly. Apart from being their first comeback in a while there was nothing else that made me attached to Queendom. If this was an anime I would consider this song filler. It's not bad, it's not great, it's just there and it exists. I don't know if I'm alone with this opinion, but I really thought Red Velvet could have done something better than this. Playing safe just isn't something they do. For a group who is known to be the unique one who does not fit into the norm, this was pretty disappointing to say the least. I always had high regards for Red Velvet. They have been releasing some of the best music K-pop has to offer. So I really hope the next comebacks wouldn't turn out like this. Going back to doing the same things that made them relevant in the first place. I was so happy when the teasers for this comeback got released. The moment I saw that girl with a bag on her head I knew this would be the shit. This is the red velvet I was missing all these years. And in my opinion, this is the song that best describes red velvet. Let me elaborate. Like I've said 50 million times, this group wouldn't be anywhere if it weren't for their unique approach in concepts and music. Whatever the concept was, they always translated it perfectly through the music. Tropical Summer, Dollhouse Quirk, Sexy Blondes, Crazy Blondes, Homicide with the Girls, Homicide with Pizza, Amusement Park Core, and the list goes on and on. And what about Feel My Rhythm? I don't know if it's not obvious enough, but it's about art. What kind of art do you ask? The art of music, art of performance, fashion, cinema, architecture, theater, and all kinds of art in general. This song is nothing but a tribute to art. Being someone with a deep appreciation for it and Red Velvet, this is just a dream come true for me. Though I never knew I actually needed it until I received it. Feel My Rhythm to say the least is a very stylish song. From all aspects of art it touches I think this was beautifully done. All the references and that cool bark sample, that's peak of music right there if you ask me. I have honestly not felt this way for a Red Velvet title since Russian Roulette. It was really nice seeing the girls do something creative again. I don't know exactly where I heard it but this was apparently supposed to be released right after day 3. But again, lots of shit transpired and it never happened. And looking at it now, if Red Velvet ever released it during that time, Reed Festival would have been the best tetralogy in music ever. It's a shame such things had to occur, but either way I am glad this specific song and comeback exists. Not that I'd want it to happen, but if I were to choose a disbandment song for them it would probably be this. Because like I've said this is a song that I believe perfectly resembles Red Velvet as artists. It felt climactic in a graceful way. I feel like this was a song they were bound to make all these years. I wouldn't be surprised if this was planned from the very beginning. Thankfully Red Velvet isn't over just yet. For a group who has been at it for 7 years they definitely haven't lost their touch. Most groups at this point would be doing something new or different, but not in Red Velvet's case. They always have been doing something new, doing what they wanted. They've always been doing it for the art and I hope they don't stop here. Red Velvet could still go on for years if we're being honest. The members look like they enjoy performing with each other a lot and that's enough for me. Add that with SM's never disbanding curse, I think they can last at least 5 more years. There's really no other group like Red Velvet, they own everything given to them. Concept, music, style, they are simply unbeatable. Because no one else can do Red Velvet other than Red Velvet themselves. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>